Okay, so we, we'll look at a, an example now of the balancing of, of rotating mounts. Um, and this is a, what we would call a static static balance. So we have uh, this propeller where we have uh, one kilogram at one meter here. And we've one kilogram by one meter here and 1.5 kilograms per one meter here okay so this is the the heavy blade and we have to try and uh, and we have to try and balance that okay so uh, the the forces were m r so m1 by r1 is one and it's in this direction so that's that vector uh, M2 is 1.5 by 1, and it's in that direction, so that's this guy. And M3 is 1 by 1, and that's this guy here. Okay, so that's 1, 2, and 3. So if we want to to balance this um, uh, propeller, then we would have to add in... Um, a weight that it's uh, and its position so that the vector will bring it right back in here and we get zero so we get no vibration okay so we're, we're looking for an answer uh, like that okay like this purple line okay so if we're going to balance it then the sum of the uh, forces in the x direction must be equal to zero so this is m1 r1 cosine theta 1 so this is for this blade m2 r2 cosine theta 2 so this is this blade m3 r3 cosine theta 3 this is our this blade and this is the mass we're going to add in to balance the the propeller okay uh we don't know what that is or where we're going to put it we're just putting in as a as a variable at the moment so when I put in the values, so this is one kilogram by one meter, and the angle, so we, we, we said in the introductory video, which was another video, we measure all the angles from this position. So that's 90 degrees. So cosine theta one is 90 degrees. Theta two, again, we're measuring from this angle. So it's, it's that angle there. So that is 90 plus 120, which is 210. So theta 2 is 210. It's 1.5 kilograms and it's 1 meter. So that's cosine 2000 or 210. M3, R3, so it's uh, 1 and 1. And the angle here then is 210 plus 120, which is 330. So it's cosine 330. And then we add in our resultant um, mass, okay, which we don't know what that is yet. So when I add them all up and I bring the answer to the other side, I get, so when I add this and this and this and bring it to that side, I get MRRR cosine theta R is equal to 0.433. Okay, we do the same with the uh, vertical forces, except we're using sine. So again, sine of 90, this would be the sine of 210, sine of 330, and it's M1, R1 for here, M2, R2 here, and M3, R3 here. I might as well put this. Okay, and this is our resultant. So when I add these, these three together and, and bring the answer to that side, I find that m r r r sine theta r is equal to 0 0.25. Okay, so there's my horizontal component and there's my uh, my vertical component. Now if we take a circle. In this quadrant, all the trigonometric functions are positive. In this quadrant, only the sine is positive. 
in this quadrant only tan is positive and in this quadrant only cosine is positive. So we just discovered that m r r r cosine theta r is equal to 0.42. So this is a positive and the sine of that is also a positive. So our solution is going to be in this quadrant here. So we can draw a triangle. So there's our horizontal component, 0.433. There's our vertical component, 0.25. And there is our resultant, this guy here. And if I want to get that value, well, the square and the, this is a right angle. The square and the hypotenuse is equal to sum of the squares into the two other sides. And that works out to be 0.5. So we're going to need a mass times radius of 0.5 kilogram meters. And what is this angle? Well, that angle is the inverse tan of uh, 0.25 over 0.433 which is uh, 30 degrees. So basically it's telling us that this, this is our propeller. There's 30 degrees roughly. We would have to put a mass uh, radius combination of 0.5 at this position to balance that propeller. 